Hi, I'm Carolyn Duby, and I'm going to be showing you some of my art journal studio play today. I was cleaning up the studio, and in the process, things that I've had around sparked me scraps of paper, and so I decided to use those together. This one is the one that I really want to use. I'd been jelly plating, had some when I was cleaning off the brayer, put this paper next to another one, and it was still too much wet paint apparently, and they stuck together. So when I pulled them apart, I got this great thing and I absolutely love it for a couple of reasons. One of them is the word that it happens to be on this dictionary page of playtime. So I had to use that thing. And I've got these. I was cutting out some different scraps to do some die cutting with from book pages that I'd colored and this thing just just hollers to me. So I've got to got to use it somehow. And then the mess that I made when I was die cutting some letters and I love these scraps just because it gives me great texture and then some various letters that I haven't used so I don't know where I'm going with this I just know I like these things together and I'm just gonna trust the instinct rather than fight it um, I am going to be using some gel medium you can use any kind of gel medium this is thin paper so I'm actually using I have watered down gel medium because I bought uh, the thick kind and I didn't I don't use it very often I used to use a credit card to smear this stuff around but now I am starting to really play around with these catalyst wedges and they're just rubber rubber tools and I actually like them because they're a little more flexible than the credit card for me I just got a whole bunch of that on there I'm gonna stick that on kind of pull that under. I love how that, oh, I just love how that turned out. You know, I may have to start just sticking papers together on purpose because I really love how that worked. I did not do a good job putting down gel medium. So parts of it, oh yeah, there was none there at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go over some of the top. Crazy idea. Take some of it over the top. I'm not doing that great a job on adhering it down. And you know what? That's perfect for what I want to do with it now. So that gave me an idea of what I'm going to do with it. So, huh, isn't that, isn't that fun the way that happens sometimes? You know what? That guy is just not going where I want him to, so I'm going to make him just go somewhere else. How's that? Huh, there you go. Down you go in there. Again, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. But I'm going somewhere. And so I'll just keep putting that stuff on there. Oh, I got this. I know I want that there. So I'm going to put a little bit over there. I want to really protect that word playtime up there because it says playtime. Oh, cool. I have blue paint in here that I'm picking up. Huh. Not going to bother me because this is going to be a whole mess by the time I'm done. So I've got that part there. Then. Let's see. I've got this guy. Do I want to put that there? You know what? I want to make a bridge to go from this page to that page. I usually don't work in two page spreads, but I want to give it a little bit of a bridge. I'm actually going to put the handle back on this. Well, not that handle. Be right back. There, that's the handle that fits back on that one. Nice part about these is because they're like this rubbery stuff. I'm sure it's not really, it's whatever material they make them out of. It feels rubbery. Paint doesn't stick to it, so I'm not worried about stuff sticking. So I'm going to just put a bunch of this on in my very careful way. <clears throat> not. Hope that sarcasm came through there. And just kind of smear this stuff around. I don't care if some of it wrinkles, moves around, or that the letters are upside down. I didn't even notice that. But it basically gives me a bridge from this page to this page. And I got another one of those, and I'll go big one over there. Like I said, this is a regular gel medium, but I added water to it to thin it down because I'm working with, um, I usually work with thin papers. And it lets it stretch a little bit farther. Wow, I just really put gel medium all over the place, didn't I? Oh well. It'll come in handy in some way as I'm finishing this up. But when I've done this before with the credit card, it's a very rigid type thing. And this is just, it's like 
kind of like using a spatula. It's actually kind of nice. Actually, it's really nice. Okay. So I got that on there. And then trying to put that there. And these these are just scraps that I had. Oh, yep. And that one says to me that's where I need to be. Pop that down there. A little gel medium over the top. Oh yeah. Now I've got all that happening there, but I've got nothing or just a little bit of a bridge with it. So I think I'm actually going to put that up there and oh look at that word that's plentifulness yeah I gotta make sure that word stays too playtime plentifulness Ugh. could could it have any better words on it for what playtime is oh. I mean it's just love that time in the studio this time in the studio I probably should be doing, you know, grown-up things, <laughs> but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep playing. I still have no idea where this is going. Just using up scraps from around the studio. Do I want to go there? Or do I want to go? Oh, that just loses it there. Oh, I could see something standing there. Something needs to stand there. It's almost like a little little disco dancing stage. You know what? That's going to go up there. Ooh, like that there. Oh, yeah. Very happy. I like that. This is starting, this is wrinkling up on me because I really did a sloppy job putting down the gel medium. If I wanted to be really careful, I would have put the gel medium on the paper and then set it down there. I don't care. Let it wrinkle up. Adds more texture to it is what I say. So now here's the cool part about this tool. I kind of wipe off what I'm not using. And yes, there are colors in my gel medium and I don't care. And pretty much then I just kind of wipe this off. And it's clean. Like, I love not having to worry about stuff sticking to it. Great little, great little tool, my, my new friend. I don't care if this side's dry or not. I don't care if, if the stick, the thick, the thick stuff here is dry. Wow, tongue tied. Because what I want to do oh, is not turning out the way I thought. Let's see. There we go. I really liked that pulled part there. So when this stuff didn't start sticking as well. <laughs> Gave me the idea to, why not just go and rip stuff up that's not sticking well. And so now I'm getting this great tatterdy torn kind of edge. I'm going to come up here. This part I knew would not stick at all because it was just, it was bubbling so much. Oh, there we go. Now it's starting to stick. Let's start pulling stuff off of there. Oh yeah. So I went and grabbed a couple of stencils um, that I'm going to see how they how they work with this one. I wanted. I've got it feels like I've got very linear, so I wanted something that would take would make it not so linear. So I've got these. Now if I put spray ink on them, that would be good. I'm going to really play on the whole orange thing here with a little dilutions with squeezed orange. And kind of spritz that around. Use a handy dandy paper towel roll. Kind of roll that up a little bit, blot it up. I want more. I think I want to go across this down here. So I'm getting those little bits of color there, but now I've got all this wonderful juicy ink on there that I am not going to waste. 
So I am just going to flip it over, put it down there, and see where it ends up on this page. I'm not sure where it's going to turn up, which end the ink was actually on even. So we'll see what we get. Oh, I like. And I am not going to blot that off. I'm going to let that dry because I really like the way that looks. Inky and messy and painty. I've got this stencil, which is big and bold, and it's going to be able to go across these. And for this one, I'm going to use, I'm going to pull out the expensive paint. Woohoo! I'm going to use my golden. Um, as I lose the lid there. The Dilutions inks are water reactive. So as I put a wet paint on here, it's going to react with it. So some of the orange is going to come through, and I like that. I actually really like that. So to go across this stencil, I am just going to use another one of these catalyst wedges, another one I took the handle off of, and I am just going to smear it right in there. Am I going to get this in there absolutely perfectly in every way, shape, and form? No. When I'm filling out my taxes, I have to be perfect. When I am paying bills, you have to be perfect. Put the actual number. Oh, look a hair again. What is that? Every video I get to say that. Oh, look a hair. I think I'm going to go bald at this rate. Um, anyway, I don't want to. I don't have to be perfect on this. And it's very. I love that it doesn't have to be perfect. Nice thing about these catalyst wedges is it just it's just scrapes right in there. And it can get in things. It's just, it feels good in my hand. It's almost like finger painting without having to get your fingers all in it. I can then use, I mean, just, oh, I get those great color combinations there. And I need to go across. I'm finding I'm more willing to use ex my expensive paints, you know, because I was saving those for, you know, the, the perfect project or, you know, the good stuff. Because I didn't want to waste any of it. And with this, because there's so little, I mean, I just squirt it right on the wedge. I'm not wasting much paint at all. You know what? I'm going to do one up here. Oh, I love how that yellow and the magenta work. Mm. You know what? I'm going to finish this one. Up. And with this one, I'm going to try and use up all the paint that's on there. So that one's going to be nice and heavy. Now when I lift that up, I've got all these great lines around it because I did a sloppy job painting. It wasn't a perfect painting job. But it ended up giving me some dimension and depth and detail that I couldn't have if I was trying this actually with a paintbrush. Because I've got those edges where it's darker, it's automatically given me some definition to them as opposed to me having to go back and put a pencil over them. I think I'm going to put some more orange in it around some of the edges. And I'm going to use another wedge. This time I'm going to use a smaller one. This is a size 15 of the wedges and just put the paint right on there. And I'm going to come right along here. Put that on. Oh, yeah. Because I've got, now this is a heavy bodied um, paint, and if I put it on in a heavy way, I can't see the stuff that's under it. But because this is almost like a squeegee meets a paintbrush kind of thing, and it's flexible, I can scrape off or squeegee down just to a thin coat of paint really easily. And I'm going to kind of let that orange migrate around so that it's not just right along the edges. And that gives that a bit of a pop. Now I've got the orange down here and I've got the orange up there. And I just squirted more orange on here, so I have to use more orange somewhere. You know what? I think I'm going to go up in this corner on camera and squeegee there. Now because I just want to put a little bit of color up here, because I can squeegee this, I can really stretch that color.
and that gives me some balance to it. Now time for some of my yellow, which I'm hiding from myself. Where are you? Well, good news, I'm keeping it very safe. But not that safe, I found another tube of yellow. This is a tube I've had for a while. It's down near the end, and this is kind of dryish, thick paint. It's almost getting, well, it's just, it's old, strangely. It's a different yellow than what I had on this, so that if I go in and try and fill this in a little bit, it's going to give me a slight color variation from what I had of the other yellow, and I like that. It's going to give me some variety. And I'm just squeegeeing the stuff on. Oh. Up here is where we're gonna, I'm going to get some of the magic. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you of the catalyst tools because now what I can do is kind of blend these together. I'm working with the wets, but I don't have a lot of paint on here. So what's happening is, is it's not, if I had a paintbrush, this would be too heavy. I'd end up with too much paint. Um, so this way I can use very little paint, but end up with some great blending while I'm working with wet orange and the wet yellow without overpowering either one, letting them each be there which is something that I've really struggled with doing if I was using an actual paintbrush. But when I'm going to use one of these blades from Catalyst, it's much easier for me to do it. Well, now I love that so much, I don't like that so much. Hmm. Interesting how that works. Okay, so I'm going to add some more magenta over here. Yeah. I'm going to just keep using this blade. Squirt it right onto the blade. So I get a thin, I just, it's a very, that is a very small of paint that's on there. It's almost like just kind of pushing it across the top. And then I'm going to come in and add some more depth and layers to it. Oh yeah. Yep. And that's what it needed. Just a little something. It's not a lot but it's enough that it makes it stand out as a layer. Keep it there. Okay. Now the other thing that you can do with the edge of the blade, so I've got a little bit of paint right on the edge of the blade, is now I can kind of almost write in it, drawing, it's like, so I can just get some lines up there. What if I added some white? I've got this big old chunky Stabilo pencil called a Woody 3-in-1 pencil. Thing's huge. I feel like a little kindergartner that has the big crayon. So if this page is all about playtime and plentifulness and now that we've said school, all I can see here is a big tooth. <laughs> and there will be his big toothbrush. You know what? If that's what I see, I'm gonna play with it. Mm. I see a big tooth and there's the toothbrush that he's holding some scribbly lines around that. I doubt other people are going to see it as a tooth and a big toothbrush there, but I all know what it is. And it's all about being in school, being a little kid again, playing in the studio is kind of how I'm feeling today. Go away, there we go. So I've got playtime and plentifulness. I've got, you know, remember how exciting it was when you lose a tooth in school and it was like the greatest thing when you got to make the march up to the office to get the, the little special thing to hold it in when you're holding the tooth. And the little bits of, you know, and if you got blood on the tooth, that was even better. You're like one of the cool kids if you could get a bloody tooth out. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my tooth there. <laughs> I don't know what brought that memory up. So I'm just kind of scribbling around this thing clearly to outline my little toothy thing here and his little brush. 
What if I put some white up here? Let's see, what do I want to say? Playtime. <gasps> oh, sorry, it's our preschool. And here's the thing is, I don't think you can read the word that I wrote there. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I can read the word I wrote there. It doesn't matter. It's just about the play. Okay. The tooth here. This paint was not completely dry, so it smeared a little bit of around with it. Smeared a little bit of it around. Perfectly fine with me. I actually kind of like that. And so I'm just going to play around. Just add some scribbles and doodles. I don't know if we call these doodles. This is more scribbles. Just kind of whatever I feel like doing here. 